I'm back and going as strong as ever. Things are going to heat up this time around, so let's talk about enthalpy. Despite the complicated name, the concept of enthalpy is simple. It is heat within a system. You could, for example, measure the enthalpy within my phone. However, there is one caveat to this. It has to be at the same temperature and pressure throughout all of the measurements. Normally what you'd use is something called standard temperature and pressure, often abbreviated as STP in most textbooks. Standard temperature and pressure is 273.15 degrees Kelvin, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and is exactly 100 kilopascals of pressure, slightly under one atmosphere. This brings us to enthalpy's use in chemistry. Let's hit my kitchen. Here we are with a classic elementary school science experiment. Here I have baking soda, and here I have vinegar. When we combine them, they will create a chemical reaction. Specifically this one here, but don't worry about that for now. There are two types of chemical reactions in chemistry. The first one is exothermic. These are ones that emit energy. Every reaction has two parts. You have the system, which are the reactants, in this case baking soda and vinegar, and then you have the environment, which is literally everything else in the universe. The enthalpy of the system goes down when this energy is moved from the system out into the surroundings. An endothermic reaction is a reaction where the system absorbs energy from the surroundings. The enthalpy of the system goes up because it is getting energy from the surroundings and moving it to the system due to this reaction. A good example of this is a cold pack that you get at the nurse. You give it a chop, all the chemicals mix together, and the reaction they cause makes it get very cold and suck energy from the surroundings, or a broken elbow, into the cold pack, making everything around it colder. This reaction right here is going to be an exothermic reaction. It is taking energy from the reactants and giving it off into the environment. Alright, I'll stop delaying the inevitable. I'll get this thing set up and we can watch this thing in slow motion. Three, two, one. We've looked at enthalpy, exothermic, and endothermic reactions, and we've watched a reaction for ourselves. But how can we use this on the regions? Let's take a look at a regions problem, and we shall solve it together. Let's take number 8 in chapter 15 of the chemistry textbook. It reads, Given the equation representing the reaction of CH4 plus CO2 turns into 2H2O plus CO2 plus heat, which statement is drawn by this reaction? The reaction is exothermic because of heat, the reaction is exothermic because of heat, the reaction is exothermic because of heat, and the reaction is exothermic because of heat. As you can see, on the right hand side, there is heat that is being let off into the surroundings after the reaction. It isn't absorbing heat, as that would require excess heat to be on the left side of the equation, the side before the reaction. It isn't endothermic, because endothermic reactions absorb heat. Therefore, it is an exothermic reaction. Let's see if Pass Connor agrees with me. Exothermic reactions are reactions that give heat off into the surroundings. Great! Let's look at the final question in the textbook. Number 7 on chapter 15. It reads... The part about the balance equation is telling us that no energy is being left out. The writers including a pressure and temperature bit is telling us that we don't have to worry about anything screwing with our enthalpy numbers due to temperature or pressure changing throughout the reaction. If we look, all the excess energy is on the right hand side of the equation. Based on our prior knowledge, and our experience from answering the question before, we can determine that this is an exothermic reaction. That just leaves us with what delta H equals. The Greek letter delta, in both science and math, mean a change. In this case, it's a change in H, which, you guessed it, is a change in heat. You think that with an exothermic reaction, the change in heat would be positive, but that isn't true. Because it is giving off heat to the surroundings, the amount of energy within the substances itself are going down. Therefore, 
the change in heat is negative. The opposite is true for endothermic reactions. Because it is absorbing heat from the surroundings, the change in heat is positive. Therefore, the answer is 1 due to it being exothermic and the change in heat, or the delta H, being negative. I hope you've learned something today, and I hope that you have a great and hopefully warm day. Thank you for watching.